Christmas Eve. That time of year again when all creatures of the night are unleashed to the world. It's time to return to where it all started. Another year, but the scares continue. Another month, but the fear proceeds to rise. This is the venom of the forest to trapped in time. Rob, you have nearly finished another trilogy. How would you feel about having some help reviewing this one? Okay. This is Will. Hey Rob. Hi. You want to review Saw 6 with me? Sure. Often dubbed the best sequel. By morons. Saw 6 was actually directed by Kevin Grouchard, who edited the first five. This was his directorial debut. But the original idea was that Detective Hoffman, who is now Jigsaw, should take on the Mafia. Okay, that would have been awesome. Many people slate the sequels for all being the same and ruining the story and character of Jigsaw, but for whatever reason, part six, despite being the least grossing out of the entire franchise, is dubbed the best of all the sequels. And we're here to see why. Because I have no idea. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. So traditionally, we start the movie with a jigsaw trap. Also, the lighting in this movie is very good. It's much brighter and clearer and just cleaner. However, it does remove the grimy feel conveyed by the lighting of the previous movies, so I'm not sure how I feel about it. Whatever you do, don't lean forward. What's, what's, what's oh, and then he immediately leans forward. Way to go, dumbass, you had one job. All right, the opening trap is admittedly kind of cool. Both victims have conned people into dodgy loans and now they have to put some weight onto a scale and the winner gets freedom. Fun fact, the actress, Tandra Howard, actually won the role after winning the first series of the reality TV show, Screen Queen. And ironically, she delivers a better performance than most people in this movie. Technically, can't they just piss or shit onto the scale or put the meat cleaver on it? I mean, it doesn't specify how you add the weight. And again, much like the other installments, this goes against Jigsaw's supposed motif. Most people were angry because this movie and other sequels lost sight of Jigsaw's message. Right here, one of these people has to die. The whole point of Jigsaw is to give people a chance to survive. Then making a trap where someone has no choice but to die goes against the entire message. It's quite literally been in almost every single Saw film before this. I mean, in the first one, Amanda had to kill a guy to get the key out. Dr. Gordon was instructed to kill Adam. Granted, he didn't, but his entire goal was to murder a person. And if he didn't, his family would be killed. And some have said these plot holes can be explained by the fact that Detective Hoffman has been doing the traps and he always went against Jigsaw's motif. And his plans fall flat. In the previous film, his sister was killed, so he put the murderer in a trap and made that one deliberately unescapable. He then got an earful from Jigsaw and learned the true nature of the trap. So you can't just say it's explained because one, it isn't, and two, Jigsaw himself did the same sh** in the very first movie. Yeah, this is a pretty big problem with the franchise. Jigsaw's ho and o is that he gives everyone a chance to survive. If you follow the rules, you'll make it out. However, if you look back on the movies, that's not the case. In these competition traps, that's, that's not gonna happen. Either one is gonna die. That just doesn't work. Hell, even in the one-man traps in the original, there is no way you would survive a cage of barbed wire. You, you just couldn't. And it's the same with the opening scene of this movie. John Kramer does like his bull doesn't he? So why do people keep acting like it was the sequels that made this so? It's always been evident. Sorry, Jigsaw, but you are most definitely a murderer. I think Saw 2 and Saw 5 are the only films that really nail Jigsaw's ideology, because in Saw 5, they all had to work together so they could all survive. It makes me wonder, though. In both this trap and Amanda's in the original, they had to lean forward to activate the trap. So what happens if they didn't? If they just stayed put, would they just sit there patiently and awkwardly until the cops showed up? Then again, Jigsaw's apparently a f***ing psychic, so I guess he'd just anticipate that they'd lean forward and there'd be nothing for him to worry about. It's a bit unfair, though. That guy's a fat f***. He has quite a big advantage. Credit to her, though. She doesn't even hesitate in chopping her own arm off. She just makes Dr. Gordon look like a complete b in the first film. Would she even survive this though? I mean, in the original, Lawrence at least used a shirt to try to stop or slow the bleeding, but here she just chops her arm off. I'm pretty sure she'd bleed out and lose consciousness before she'd even make it out of the room. But nah, she survives and even comes back in the next one. But no, she wins because of common sense. Well, the fat guy dies from some admittedly fantastic gore. 
And thanks to more flashbacks, we learn that Amanda was with Cecil the night that Jill miscarried. Let's just keep this in mind, because it leads to the worst part of the entire movie. Then we get a recap to remind us which one we're watching. Agent Strom's death was pretty awesome though, I will admit, as he's crushed to death, but conveniently leaves just one hand. Well, it's a good thing that his hand made it out completely unscathed, so Hoffman could conduct this evil scheme to frame him. Otherwise, the f*** would he have done then? In fact, wait, at the end of Saw 5, he says, And my legacy will become yours. Does that mean he's just as psychic as Jigsaw and knew that Strom would try to escape through the air vent? Unlikely, because this movie shows he's pretty crap at anticipating people's moves and is most definitely not a psychic. But then we meet the typical Mr. R of the Saw movies. This is William, probably one of the best protagonists in the entire series. What? We will see. I don't get it. We then get a sequence that serves no purpose to the story, but to show William's colleagues that all appear in traps later on. Yeah, the writers think they're clever. But I'm sorry, the main character, William, is a complete dick. A guy heads there to try to get covered for cancer treatment and he refuses to help. Why should we even feel sorry for him later when he's in a trap? It's not like the original where they both did douchey things but they were mild. They were redeemable douchey things. This is practically murder in of itself. But look, look, all these people are sat around the table like they will be later on in the film during a trap. Oh, it's such clever foreshadowing. It's genius writing. Do you think he did that on purpose? I must admit, though, there is some decent suspense as Hoffman visits the crime scene from earlier as it turns out they found fingerprints, but Hoffman took Strom's hand to frame him. You're wondering if they suspect him, and it is really intense. Then Perez shows up, alive and well, and I just love the fact that they feel the need to do a flashback recap to remind us who the hell she is because they know most people would have completely forgotten. True. 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 If you'd like to make a statement on the record, I'd be more than happy to take it. You're know, twisting the facts to make a better story. It's irresponsible. Porter does. What do you really want? Jill Tuck. Help me get to her, and I'll dial down on the sensationalism. Really? I'll see what I can do. You know what? Hoffman's such a slimy b and I love it. <laughs> he wanted us to learn. And did you? Okay. That line is awesome. Obviously, the audience knows he set up the trap, and he's asking if it worked. And based on her reaction, it clearly did. Clever line. But based on how he's talking to this survivor, how does nobody realise he's Jigsaw yet? He's speaking like the most obvious serial killer in history! Costas Mandalore is such a great actor in these films. The cops are clearly getting close to figuring him out, and you can tell from his face alone that he's shitting himself. But what about these people, Jill, who come here every day and use you? They bide their time. They're avoiding prison sentences. They're getting hooked on masking agents. Do you call that recovering? Okay, Tobin Bell is also fantastic. This whole monologue is awesome. I swear, every word that comes out of his mouth is gold. He just embodies this role and oozes charisma. Jesus Christ! Also, we never see this guy again, so for all we know, he died. Maybe it's a good thing that this movie ends the way it does. Otherwise, William may have spent the rest of his life in jail. But did John just pre-record a hundred tapes for traps before he died? And it looks like it was a while ago, considering he's not sick or struggling to breathe. He's a genius! He's predicted everything years in advance! He predicted 9-11, the last six winners of the World Cup, he predicted the coronavirus. Mystic Meg, this one. Mom. Where are we? I don't know. What is this? I don't know. A really bad Saw sequel. But don't worry, there's worse to come. While well, only 52 years of age, this man has continued to smoke even though he has a history of high blood pressure and heart disease. Seriously? A smoker. He's putting someone in a trap for smoking. I get it, smoking's bad for you, you don't appreciate your life, yada yada. It's like John's running out of reasons to put people in traps. Oh my god, that guy's got hay fever! Saw trap! But William starts his trap in quite a precarious position. I mean, what if he fails and dies right away? Then he can't go through all the other tests and the entire game fails. Live or die, William. Make your choice. F*** you! Who the hell is that? Seriously? He doesn't know one of the most notorious serial killers? Who is this 
Ted Bundy you're referring to. By the way, these two are mother and son. Oh, and the guy is the kid from the Wimpy Kid Diary movies. Strange choice for a career move. And they literally just chill until the ending. Yeah. Just wait, that, that's all they do. And their conclusion wasn't even worth the wait, and it makes no sense. So we get more flashbacks, including Hoffman receiving a strange letter from someone knowing who he is. Ooh. So in a sense, you choose who lives or dies. No. I, uh, no, I'd say I decide which people have the potential to live long, healthy lives. Man, this guy's such an arrogant prick. It makes his arc over the course of the movie that more satisfying. But this speech is absolutely amazing, thanks to Tobin Bell. Until a person is faced with death, it's impossible to tell whether they have what it takes to survive. So William reaches another game where he has to save one person. Again, someone has to die! There's no way to survive! This isn't the message they keep trying to pretend they're going for! Also, how the hell is John operating the puppet when he's nowhere nearby? Basically, he has to either save a woman who is middle-aged and with a loving family, or a young guy who has no family and is a loner. This is obviously connected to his career and he's conflicted, but... I'd just go with the young guy. I mean, he's still young and has his whole life ahead of him. Give him a chance to start a family, Jigsaw. He's only like 25. Calm down. But this is why I love William's character. When faced with those whose lives are in his hands, he's horrified and tries to save as many people as he can, feeling genuinely sorry for those he has to let die. His cocky facade shatters and it's revealed that he does care for those close to him. And over the course of the movie, he does learn the value of life, realises how wrong his actions were and becomes a better man for it. He injures himself to save his employees throughout the movie and doesn't think twice, something he'd never think of doing before. He's actually a wonderfully written character. If it wasn't for the ending, I'd probably agree with you. Oh boy. But wait, how exactly does the old woman get out okay? He just leaves her there. I wonder if she died getting out. I bet she died getting out. Hello, Pamela. You've sensationalized my life, twisting the truth and exploiting my message for your own benefit. Can we just do this to all reporters, please? By the way, we never hear about this package or who it's for again. In the next movie, it is revealed to have been for Dr. Gordon, though. This series planning is insane. Oh, you know they pulled this out of their ass and they were just making it up as they went along. Dr. Gordon was supposed to be in this one. Shut up. That's a human being. A human being you're about to strap into a trap which will slowly twist his arms, legs and head. We'll call him Steve. But hey, if you weren't already impressed by John's psychic abilities, he just so happens to know exactly what to write on William's body in order to trigger memories and flashbacks. So this is all because John visited William to get insurance for his cancer surgery overseas, but was denied. But this doesn't quite add up. Please, if you do this, you'll be on your own and the subsequent cost to you will be staggering. Don't talk to me about money. I have money. So why are you here? This whole motivation makes no sense. If you've got money, just go overseas and get the cancer treatment. Why does John hold this grudge, ultimately end up dying, and hate this guy and put him in a trap? He doesn't need him. He literally admits he doesn't need him. You sure about that? So what they're saying is that if William didn't deny John his insurance, Jigsaw wouldn't have been created. So wait, why did William continue his job and his policies after discovering that he literally created a serial killer who likely would hold a grudge against him. I mean, it was on the news that John Kramer was Jigsaw. It's just weird. They're making us hate the protagonist and sympathize with the serial killer. Did you know that in the Far East, people pay their doctors when they're healthy? When they're sick, they don't have to pay. So basically, they end up paying for what they want, not what they don't want. We got it all ass backwards here. Who cares? That dialogue is awesome. Tobin Bell's a gem. You think it's the living that will have ultimate judgment over you. Because the dead will have no claim over your soul. But you may be mistaken. And that line is truly chilling. To be fair, William still mentions how John's wife will be deeply affected after he's dead, showing he has genuine concern despite his awful actions. There's a hint of a good man in there, and it's through his traps that he becomes the best version of himself. I'm telling you, man. 
William's a great character. Why's that? Seriously, the hell he goes through to try to save his employees shows incredible growth. He really is the best protagonist in the whole series. I do always love the music and the set designs. They are all awesome. The movies are always produced so well. So he gets this woman across a steam-filled room after hurting himself in the process, but right at the end, he finds out that the key to unlock her is inside his own body. And despite just saving her life, she grabs a damn buzzsaw without a second thought and attacks it. Dude! He was even willing to cut into his body to get it. But it was a little too late, mind you. Ungrateful b She deserved to die. Why are all these people our b And since she died, that trap was completely pointless. Someone's there. They're watching us. Why? Why would someone do this? How does nobody know who John Kramer is? I would understand if it was a prequel or a time lapse kind of thing, but it isn't. Let's pull it. No. We don't know what it does yet. But mom, I want a purpose in this movie. And then we're back to Hoffman, nearly getting caught out. Seriously, Mandalore is so good. The cops are so close to busting him and he's so screwed. And you can tell just from his body language alone, he's a great villain. But then we get another trap where William has to literally murder four people. This is a jigsaw! Jesus Christ, jigsaw, four people? Even with the examples I've given from other movies, this is a bit too much. So basically there's six people, he has to sacrifice his hands to stop the gun from shooting two, and it won't stop until all the bullets are out. I mean, couldn't he just sacrifice his hand for all six? I mean, it fires the bullet safely in the air when he makes the sacrifice, and once all six bullets are done, Jigsaw would have to come and reload. <laughs> then again, Jigsaw sees all, so he might have designed it that way to prevent that from happening. Never mind. Yeah, that'd be rather awkward if she actually was pregnant. Well, at least it doesn't let the black guy die first. But this guy is seriously overacting to hell. It's only Saw 6, man. You're not getting an Oscar. Look at me! When you're killing me, you look at me! Okay, that line is awesome. This could have actually been a really emotional and meaningful scene if we knew any of the characters or cared. I actually do love this bit. For the first time ever, William has to look someone in the eyes as he lets them die. He finally feels the guilt and remorse he should have felt years ago, and all it took was seeing one of his victims face to face. Also, can we just point out that William lets all the men die? A bit sexist. I know. But then we get easily the best scene of the movie. The cops start to decipher an old audio tape of Jigsaw to try to find the real voice as Hoffman is anxiously pacing around the room. You can tell he's nervous and terrified about being caught while the cops watch his behavior closely. The pacing continues as the tape is in the background getting closer and closer to being revealed. This whole scene is amazing. Hoffman pacing the room paranoid, acting incredibly suspiciously. The FBI piecing together his ties to Jigsaw while the tape plays in the background, perfectly summarizing Hoffman's state of mind. Hoffman knows he's about to be found out and you can see him preparing things, such as the coffee to get the jump on them. Like, I don't understand Strom's motivation. The writers don't understand Jigsaw's motivations either. But Hoffman is such a badass as he shoots and stabs the cops. He is so cool. He's no Tobin Bell, though. He's just another fantastically written character. Due to the death of his sister, he just wants the bad guys to suffer. But by going against Jigsaw's teachings, he becomes even worse than the villains he's fought to punish. And John's most despised type of villain. A murderer. Even though John himself is also clearly a murderer. But I have a question. The cops invite Hoffman to the lab to hear the tape, but they already have their suspicions of him. They're already unsure that he can be trusted and just need this tape for confirmation, but what, they don't bother to bring any backup? They're meeting with a possible violent serial killer and don't bother bringing anyone else to help. Well, I also have a question. As badass as this scene is, what was even the point in bringing Perez back in the first place if she was going to deliver nothing to this film and just die anyway? Especially considering she already had a very memorable exit in Saw 4. In my opinion, she should have been the lead of the cops to align in Saw 3D. That way, we don't run out of police characters and therefore, we don't have to deal with that annoying f Gibson. So apparently nobody heard the gunfire or stabbing earlier, so Hoffman proceeds to put Strum's fingerprints everywhere AGAIN! They literally just told him that it didn't work because the DNA proved that Strong was already dead. So, why try it again? Especially considering the fact that he just burns down the whole place anyway. So what was the point? <laughs> and then we find out that it was actually Hoffman who sent Amanda that dodgy letter in the earlier films threatening her. Who cares? Amanda killed John's baby. This is my problem. So Hoffman supposedly blackmailed Amanda into shooting Lynn in Saw 3, knowing it would then cause her death. 
Although it was set up fantastically, as we first saw this letter in Saw 3, and are finally learning what it said, it's an awful payoff. Firstly, how the f*** did Hoffman know that Amanda was with Cecil that night? And if Hoffman knows, surely John would also know. And he already tested Amanda, he probably doesn't even give a s***. He's psychic, remember? He doesn't care. I mean, Amanda was in a trap since then and has been reformed. It doesn't matter. She's changed, in John's eyes at least. He doesn't care. But also, he's on his f deathbed. It's unlikely we'll ever see Hoffman again, and even then, he won't have any time to do anything about it. Unless he pre-records about 700 tapes and then hides them in every single crevice of his body. I mean, you laugh, but I honestly wouldn't put it past these movies at this point. Something doesn't sit right. But also, by revealing this, it just ruins Amanda's entire arc. Her choosing to kill Lynn at the end of Saw 3 was a fantastic conclusion to her story. It showed that maybe John's methods don't work. Maybe some f***ed up people remain f***ed up and can't be changed, even in a life or death situation. It raised so many questions and made you think. But now, because of this one scene revealing she was blackmailed into it the whole time, my favourite scene in my favourite Saw movie is completely ruined. F*** you, Hoffman, and f*** you, writers. It's false but Jill just so happens to bank on Hoffman sitting down on an electric chair for this entire trick to pad out perfectly. She's most definitely a Kramer. But f yeah, the reverse bear trap is back. But let's get to the ending that gives me an aneurysm. He's the man that killed my dad. How do they know that? They've never met him! So basically, William was given a client and he refused his cancer treatment as we saw earlier. That man was this woman's husband and the boy's father. And on the opposite side is William's sister. Anyway, the mother and son have a decision to make whether to forgive William or to kill him. And this pisses me off for so many reasons. They don't understand Jigsaw and they haven't for about three films. I mean, this wasn't even William's game. It was theirs. The two jackasses who stood and chilled and had a wank in this cage for an hour and a half. They were the main focus this whole time. But the whole point was that these people were meant to learn the error of their ways. And William has done that short, but then they choose to kill him anyway. He literally goes through hell, learns the true nature of life, and then dies, making this movie entirely pointless. In fact, the mother and son are the ones who pull the lever, so they murdered a man. So I can't even sympathize with them either. They're just as bad. Who do I root for in this movie? The only one who's actually a victim is the sister. And why is she there? She's there just to watch her brother die. Everyone in this film's an asshole. This movie sucks. You know what? You're right. Wait, really? I know, I'm surprised as well. You mother f William learned his lesson from this trap. He became a better man. He made sacrifices to save his employees and finally understood how sh his policies were. Only for him to die quite a brutal death. Killing him is one thing, but in such a mean-spirited and agonising way is another. Well, I don't think it takes away from his character in any way. It's certainly an ending that's just unfair. Yeah, you're right. This is a crap ending. Great success. Just look at his death. It's brutal. It really is an incredibly badass kill, and it has fantastic effects. But credit to Hoffman, he's such a badass, he manages to survive an unwinnable game. Yep, he survives because we just need one more sequel. And let's even suck a Carrie Elwes back into it. I don't even know why we need to finish on a montage of Game Over Door Sams, but it was pretty cool. And then there's even a post credit scene where Amanda tells Jeff's daughter not to trust Hoffman. This goes absolutely nowhere and is never mentioned again. Saw 6 is fucking awful! It's okay. This one does have great kills and some cool moments with Hoffman, so it's still enjoyable, but the main character is a dickweed and I can't root for him. And his entire journey is just pointless, just like the entire movie. It's watchable, but ultimately it means nothing and it's just a blip in the original franchise. Personally, I'd take this over 5 3D and Jigsaw. Well, yes, 5 does stick to Jigsaw's morals a bit more. 5 also has incredibly uninteresting characters and is just a genuinely boring movie. This film, while deeply flawed, never bored me. It was quite entertaining and I liked the characters, which is something I can't say for most of the other films in the franchise. So by that logic, I guess it is one of the better sequels, but in terms of story, it's not great. But then mind you, none of the Saw movies really are. They're sort of more movies that I enjoy as guilty pleasures more than anything else, really. <sighs> Another trilogy down. I'm just going to have a little nap. Just, just going to rest my eyes, don't mind me. <laughs>